Hello! Happy Friday, mana gatherers! We are here again on this last day of the work week, heading on into the weekend. Uh, we are going to continue with Song of Songs, Chapter 2, Verses 1 and 2. Today I am reading from the NLT, the New Living Translation version of the Bible, for these verses. Here we go. I am the spring crocus blooming on the Sharon plain, the lily of the valley, like a lily, like a lily among thistles is my darling among young women. Well, that is quite an interesting um, translation once again, like the message translation was interesting. I appreciate some things of the translator's decisions and others not so much. I like that this translation says Plain and simple, the Sharon Plain, the fields of Sharon um, covered in wildflowers was a very large plain area expanding between Mount Carmel down, um, in Judea and on down all the way to Joppa or Joppa um, in Samaria. So like a 55 from north to south, south to north, 55 uh, uh, mile plain, a very fertile plain along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. Go check it out on a map. Um, I would like to imagine, this is what I imagine, that this is the place, this 55 mile plain covered in wildflowers and very fertile, known for its fertility and bountifulness and... Um, where King David grazed his um, cattle and sheep roam, just this beautiful plain. This was the, ple the place Jesus had in mind when he said in Matthew 6, 27 through 30, And can any of you by worrying add a single hour to the span of your life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field. On the plains of Sharon, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will God not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? When we pause long enough to smell the roses, so to speak, see what I did there? Smell the roses of Sharon. We notice the beauty of God's creation all around us that neither worries or toils or goes into debt or panics over how or what they will eat or be clothed with or be sheltered by. This is not, I am not saying, this is an appeal, this is not an appeal to abandon all your responsibilities and all of your careful planning and attempt to live as a wild and free, beautiful wildflower on the plain of Sharon. No, this is simply a reminder to breathe, like we talked about last week, and make room for God, not allowing yourself to be so overcome and consumed with worry and anxiety, faith over fear, as so often is said these days, was what I think Jesus meant as he preached this Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 6 with the beautiful, flowering, fertile plain of Sharon in mind as he spoke. And maybe he had in mind even these words of Song of Songs too. This discourse between Solomite and this Shulamite woman just as it is clear throughout the Song of Songs and even in just these two verses alone, Solomon commits himself to providing and taking care of and loving this woman he is completely head over heels in love with and would do anything for. How much more does our God, who we are told over and over and we know loves us unconditionally, how much more will this God promise to take care of one of us, each of us, all of us? Solomon's glory and love pale in comparison to God's glory and love and provision. When you find yourself admiring nature's beauty, 
all the, maybe you stop and notice some mums, it's fall this time of year, they're beautiful. And the colors are, you know, this, this past Sunday, the altar flowers were beautiful. And Connie Warren created such beautiful bouquets to take to our shut-ins. When you find yourself admiring nature's beauty, maybe may you also be reminded of God's great love, God's great provision for you. I will see you tomorrow on our last day as we reflect on Song of Songs 2 verses 1 and 2.